Power of words applies in leadership, persuasion, selling, negotiation, recruitment, scripts, overcoming objections, dealing with underwriters, dealing with insurance companies. It's all words. So here's some of the words I added to my repertoire. Maybe it could help you out as well. Replace the word should with ought. Stop telling people what they should do. That's not your business. Tell them this is what you ought to do. Because ought still gives me an out. Should doesn't give me an out. Should is a judgmental word. Ought is not. So replace those two. Request. Hey, John, can I make a request? Yeah, yeah, Pat, what's going on? I'd like to see us improve in the following areas, man. Yeah, you know what, Pat, we're going to work on. It. Okay, cool. That's my request. G guys, can I make a request? No, right? Word request. Request. Add it to your repertoire. Next. Hey, Johnny, can I make a suggestion to you? Yeah, of, of course. What's that? So I can make it to you? Yeah. I don't know if I would put that desk over there. Why not? Here's why. You know how people enter? Whatever it is. Can I make a suggestion to you? Next. Bobby, if I were you, I would consider doing the following. But I'm not you. But if I were you, I would do this. But you got to do what you got to do. But if I were you, I would do dot, dot, dot. Johnny, do I have your permission to be direct with you? Sure. Do I have your permission? Yes. Hey, babe. Yeah, babe. Do I have your permission to be direct with you? Yeah, of course. What happened? You know, the other day family was over, and he kind of joked about that one thing. It just really bothered me. Really bothered. I've been thinking about it for four. It's been four days I'm still thinking about it. Oh, I'm so sorry, babe. No, it's okay, babe. I just want to tell you, like, moving forward, like, that's got to kind of stop. Like, it just doesn't sit well with me. I appreciate you listening to me, but, you know, I just want to tell you that. Oh, babe, I'm so sorry. I'm, I'll work on a moving forward. Thanks so much, babe. All good. You want to go to dinner? Yeah. Let's go to dinner, right? So, boom, conversation now. Versus, what the fuck about the other day? You, you, make some, it's, you know, maybe it's good for movies, but it's not good for marriage, you know, when you're kind of live to animate it. Hey, you know what I want you to consider? What's that? I want you to consider doing this. Consider has an out. Ought has an out. Suggest has an out. Request has an out, right? Let me get back to you. A lot of us want to give answers right now. You would save 80% of your arguments if you just said to people at the end, Hey, Johnny, yeah, um, let me get back to you. Okay. Yeah, like, just give me like a couple days. All right, cool. You get back to them. If it's important, they'll get back to you. If you make a note of it, you're going to get back to you. You got two days to process the decision whether you want to do it or not. But it's power of words, right? Let me make a case to you why you ought to dot, dot, dot. I'm going to make a case to you guys why you ought to make a lot of money post-pandemic. Really, what is it? Here's what it is. I'm going to make a case to you why you ought to consider getting an annuity right now. I'm going to make a case to you why I want you to consider this kind of an insurance policy. Okay, what is it? Here's my case. And then you go into your presentation, right? Please, thank you. These words have power. A person wants to do business with you if you use these magical words versus somebody else who doesn't. If you're in the sales world, you're dealing with people or anything you're doing, these things will do wonders for you. Now let's talk about dreams. How many of have big dreams? Let's see here now this time. That man with the arms across, white shirt, glasses on, he will not raise his hand. Is that your husband, by the way? You're, you're elbowing him or no? Does he have dreams or no? Yes, what's his name? Can you tell us his name? Bart? Bart. What's, what's his last name? Tell me his last name's not. What is it? Okay. No, no, it's not Simpson, right? So it's, last name is what? Hi, Bart. My buddy Bart. Okay. Let's talk about dreams. Here we go. Number one, serious question. By the way, just so you know, nobody cares if you get this answer right or wrong. So you question, how many of you are 100% clear about your dreams and goals to the point that if I brought you up, you can recite it in 20 seconds, everybody would believe you? <laughs> how many of you? Come on, miss your hands. I can't. This light is like a tanning bed right here. How many guys? How many guys are so crisp? By the way, I appreciate you for being honest. Look, by the way, let me ask, please put your hands up. And folks, I actually want you to look around. How many of you are so crystal clear about your dreams and goals that you can go on stage and explain it to everybody? Put your hands up. Put it up high. Look around, by the way. Good to see you, buddy. You good? Good to see you. Look around. Look around. Look around. Don't look at me. Look around. Turn around and look behind you. Look behind you. How few people's hands are up. Okay? So now, great. Let's process this. So... When it comes down to dreams, I can tell you most people are not that clear. We just kind of live our life. It's like, I hope, you know. Now watch this. Some of you who are, anybody ever wonders why such a small percentage of people's dreams become a reality? 
Anybody ever wonders that? Who wonders that? Like, why does such a small people? So I've asked this question of myself so many times. Here's why. Because we don't ask the second, third, or the fourth question. So what's the second question? Here's the second question. Your dreams, that life you want to live, how demanding is that life? How demanding is that dream of yours? What does it require for you to do? Is it a one-year run? Is it a three-year run? Is it a five, 10, 15, 20-year run? What is it? How demanding is it? We don't ask that question, but some of us do. But the third one is where people quit and nobody knows. No one knows why people's dreams don't become a reality until the third question. You ready for the third question? Are you willing to meet that demand? You know, there comes a time in your life where you're kind of like, ah, Devin Booker, they ask him, they say, so how was it being in high school? He says, honestly, I never partied. I don't know how it was to party. He says, I practiced in the morning. I went to school. After school, I had double practice. Then I had another league. By the time I came home, I was done with my, I was so tired. My friends wanted to be go out. I never had time to go out. So, and then we see him in the finals, dropping 40 something points, about to win the finals. And people wonder, oh, he must be talented. No, no. He was willing to meet the demand. I wasn't willing to meet the demand in high school. I wasn't. Look at my height. I have an athletic body. I could have played a lot of sports. I wasn't willing to meet the demand. But nobody explained this thing to me. You think I'm going to explain this thing to my kids when we talk to them? Of course they're going to answer this question very soon. They're going to know whether they are or they're not. Well, many of us didn't know, but now you do. So now some of you are like, well, my dreams are pretty big. How demanding is it to have those dreams become a real? Pretty big. Are you willing to meet the demand? You know what I mean? I don't know. I know. Don't give me. Don't. 95% is I don't know. Believe me, I know. You know what the last one is? Here's the last one. When you close your eyes and you go visualize that dream, does it make you emotional? Do you actually cry about it? Do you sit there and you say, oh my God gosh, if this were to ever become a reality, I would melt. I would melt. How many of you guys can think about your dreams and get emotional? How many of you guys can do that? Raise your hand if you can do that. Now watch how many more hands came up. Now I wonder why that happens to you. Now I wonder why that happens to you. Somebody told me, says, well, Pat, I'm making $400,000 a year. I was a butcher. I was a butcher before. I was a bartender making $65,000 a year. I'm making $400,000. What the hell am I doing working 80 hours a week again? Why would I do that? I said, uh-huh, great question, because dreams are multidimensional, and you've only thought about one dimension. What's that? I just explained this in Aruba. I remember a couple weeks ago we talked about this. And here's what it is. Most of us, we only think about dreams from what perspective? Whose dreams? Ours. See, it's multidimensional. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're going to love. It's right there. Click on it. See you in there. What would you say to a struggling agent that's considering quitting that they may end up a part of 92%? You know the whole thing I was telling you about that one guy named Hunter whose dad, my mom told him he's a shy guy. One of the people I was working with is a restaurant owner. They said